Cool. Yeah. So we're here with the Dunn family. Uh, we're in Panama City, Panama. It is March 20th, 2017, and uh, we were talking last night. Uh, Mr. Dunn came and visited me in Dallas, uh, the Dallas area, about a year ago, and to talk about uh, Isabella. And uh, Mark, why don't you tell us what uh, what's going on with Isabella and the uh, the history of what's been happening? Yeah. So we <clears throat> got a diagnosis. Um, Isabel's about two and a half. Oh, I'm sorry, Isabel. Yeah. So, uh, she was. She's about. She was a little over two when we started noticing that she had difficulty walking, and we. It's. It was kind of interesting that uh, Katan and I were both talking one night and I said something about Isabella having trouble walking and Katan had been thinking the same thing she immediately just said let's go let's go see the doctor so we got the diagnosis around two and a half it was a really tough diagnosis I mean we were devastated and just beside ourselves you know we, we couldn't get over it. <clears throat> the diagnosis and a diagnosis of it was SMA, spinal so that's muscle. spinal muscular atrophy. Type two, right? Yeah, and it's it's very similar to ALS. A lot of people don't know about it, uh, but it's very similar to ALS, except that it strikes children and, instead of folks later in life. Uh, and we started looking around for stem cell therapy and clinics. It took us a while to get to that point, though. We we just did a broader search and kind of narrowed down, found a, a clinic and it eventually um, came to the, the clinic here right. in, in Panama. And uh, it's a progressive disease, um, which is one of the toughest parts about it. And uh, we're here today after, uh, this will be the seventh stem cell therapy. Uh, we've already had six. She's um, been doing really well with the stem cell therapies. I understand that she is a responder, which is very good for us. Um, it means that she's having uh, a good reaction and she gets stronger each time we have the stem cell therapy. I think one of the things we notice uh, from the beginning is she has more stability and that's a huge one because before she was diagnosed she was falling about every minute when she would try to walk around uh, two and a half and um, today it's pretty rare that she falls. I mean it's probably like, I don't know, what do you think about once every half hour? No, I don't know. I'd say that she falls at most twice a day. Right, Isabel? Yeah, Isabel. Yeah, you're Isabella. And I think uh, one huge yeah. thing is when we in Colorado, you went to Children's Hospital and uh, when you got the diagnosis they said no treatment or cure. Yeah, right. no, we didn't believe that, right? That's right. when our research started and we found out about stem cell yeah. treatment. And another thing that affects her is her eating. Um, when she was two and a half, she could not eat cheese or yeah. meat anymore, right? You said well, you had a hard time to chew. But today, can you eat meat? Yeah, sure. Can you eat cheese? Yeah, You can eat everything, right? Yeah. 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 And Isabel is now. She? She's eight. She's eight years old, and mm -hmm. this is her twin sister over here. Yeah. Yeah. This is Mariana. 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 Yep. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so what would you have expected had had you not had the stem cells for uh, Isabella now? Um, the prognosis that Children's Hospital gave us was grim, and I don't really like to repeat it. I, yeah. They, they. The first thing they said was to start looking into a, a wheelchair, and a lot of uh, Isabella's friends that that have the diagnosis are are. Can you walk, Isabella? Yeah. <laughs> you show us? I bet you want to show us. Can you show us? Yeah. <laughs> and you can run too, right? You can run. Oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> can, can you come here and jump? Okay, front of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> jump to the front. Jump to, to the back. She just learned that, like, uh, in the last nice. year to jump back. I can jump side. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's just pretty tired <laughs> right now. And that you're doing cold yourself, just balance yourself in one leg, right, honey? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, she's going to show us that. Oh, 
Oh, very nice. Oh, wow, you said that was very good. Okay. So that is something that would be completely unexpected. And in fact, from everyone that we know with this diagnosis, it is unheard of. So, um, I mean, we've, the story's pretty similar with the families that we talked to, diagnosis around the age of two, wheelchair, varying probably from often four or five years old to maybe eight, right? It was, uh, it was, uh, oh, I forgot her name now, but uh, the, I think she said that she had to go to a wheelchair full time at eight, but it, it varies uh, from patient to patient, yeah. Okay. Yep. So, so um, we're the one of the reasons that I, the, I asked you to do this was the, the Texas legislator is, is looking at uh, some legislation that might move things along quicker on the stem cell research side. Is there anything you'd like to say to the, the legislators because it, there, it's likely that well, we're doing this? Stem cell so has saved her life pretty much. And the quality of life that's offering her, it's really a blessing. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that, you know, this, our, our system moves slowly. The FDA moves slowly. Uh, the, the treatments, the, you know, there's no sort of cure that we can see any, any time, especially um, since the progression has already started for most of these kids, but we can't wait. That's the thing. I mean, they talk about uh, there's a treatment or you know on the horizon or in clinical trials, and it takes too long. It's something we can't wait for, and that's why we worked so hard and did so much research to find the stem cell therapy because we don't. You know, it, it's 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 easy for the doctors to say that. Um, you know, something's on the horizon or something's starting clinical trials, but when you're a parent, <clears throat> that's not something that you um, can do. You cannot wait, right? So, Isa, do you want to say anything? How do you feel about stem cell? Good. Good. <laughs> How makes you feel? Feels like, I guess, stem cell, I get more energy. Have, have you seen any uh, negative effects from the cell treatments? We, um, we had the last couple of years, I think it's been nothing, right? But before it was a little bit of a rise in her temperature. So not, she, not really fever, just not fever. like a reaction, but it would go away. And the last year, she didn't have didn't any have reaction all. at all. Yeah. And how about other people? You've probably mingled with plenty of people here that have been getting treatments. Have you heard of any other? No. Adverse event. No, the only thing we ever heard from the doctors was that there was, you know, potential for it. Well, I, did they call it a slight fever, a, a rise in temperature, but again, I think it would be under 100, so I don't think that's clinically a, a fever. Um, they've said that there's a potential for infection at the uh, injection site, which we didn't ever have. Mm -hmm. um, that's, and when it, that's it for the, us. Her first treatment, we went to China too, and uh, over there we saw a lot of patients, and uh, uh, we didn't hear about any bad reaction. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. That's the good thing about um, this treatment that, you know, it's the, the cells are not something that could cause like a, a rejection or graft versus host disease, that sort of thing. So that's. That's huge, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she gets more reaction with antibiotics, right? Yeah, yeah. Than with the stem cell. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. have to uh, be careful about her antibiotics when yeah. she gets What's sick. What's that? You know, when you're really sick, you get a cold, and I need to give you that pink medicine, and you end up having diarrhea. Oh, so. uh, yeah. Yeah. So one other uh, issue that would be good to cover is the, is the, the source of the stem cells that, that are used here, um, that, what's your understanding of that? Oh. Because a, a lot of uh, people have misunderstanding of the different kinds of stem cells. So. Right, yeah, so again, we've done a lot of research and um, we know that uh, MedStem was using four sources and for Isabella, it's um, from the umbilical cord itself, from the cord matrix. So. Um, 
actually, I really like that idea because right now, you know, most people in the United States throw the umbilical cord away, and that is, uh, that's sad because th it's it's saving lives. I mean, this has the potential to save lives, and and I I think uh, to be honest, I think that that should be routine. I think they should just always save the umbilical cord, save those tissues that could be such a big a big help for people who have these diseases. Right. So just just to clarify the. the these are all from live, healthy births, um, the, and the mother donates the tissue to the um, to the facility, and uh, so there's no harming of any embryo or fetus, or this is after the baby's born, the, the umbilical cord's tied, cut, and the baby's taken away, mom delivers the rest of this, and so that's what's used to, for the starting material. Mm -hmm. and I just want to make that clear, because that's one major issue people have with stem cells. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they have a gut reaction. You think it's some other source. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys very much for taking the time to sure. talk to us, and uh, look forward to seeing you again. Do you want to say anything, Mariana? How do you feel when you see your sister feeling better? Um, she definitely has a big improvement. Does she? Like she is full of energy. She can run faster, jump more, walk faster. Mm -hmm. uh, that's good, right? That you can play more with your sister. Yeah. yeah. It's good to see that stability so she doesn't fall and hurt herself. Yeah. Right? Because you worry about your sister, don't you? Know? And actually, one more point about the, the source. Um, obviously, there are choices to go with um, fat cells or to go with the um, bone marrow. and. It's, it's tough uh, for someone like Isabel. It's a genetic disease, so we're concerned about using those same, same cells. So we like the idea of the donor cells that may have a better health for her to be able to not have that same problem. Great. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate Thanks. it.